There can be many reasons why we might want to sue foreign governments. We might not like what they're doing to our own countries. For instance, with their policies, they might make it harder to trade or invest or to migrate. We might not like what they're doing to their own citizens. For instance, they might be violating human rights or threatening the peace and security of a region. We might not like their approach to global problems like climate change or nuclear weapons. Or it could be something more specific. It might be that one of our relatives is working as a fisherman and he, alongside his crew, had disappeared. He found out that the fishing boat he worked on had been sunk by a foreign country's submarine. True story by the way, check out the Changrila case before the Brazilian Supreme Court. Is there anything we can do in these situations? Can we seek justice by suing that country? The short answer is, well, it's a bit complicated. And here's why. In a nutshell, we can bring a legal claim against a foreign government in three places. Our country's domestic courts, foreign countries' domestic courts, or an international body. Let's decipher the first option. We need to understand two magical words for that. State immunity. Imagine a vaccine, it makes us immune from nasty diseases. Sovereign acts do the same. They have the magical ability to make a state immune from any claims before the domestic courts of a foreign country. So let's assume you're Luigi Ferrilli. No, not that, Luigi. You're Italian. You were captured by the German troops on 4 August 1944 during the Second World War. You were deported to Germany and forced to work for the war industry until 20 April 1945. On 23 September 1998, you petitioned the Italian court for reparation from Germany for physical and psychological harm due to the inhuman treatment you were subjected to while imprisoned. In moments like these, state immunity works its magic. Against your best efforts, you couldn't convince the court of first instance and the court of appeal that your voice should be heard. These courts had decided that the German acts were of a sovereign nature and hence immune. But of course you didn't give up. You never give up. So you appeal to your final destination, the Italian Supreme Court. And what do you know? Mesmerized by your plea, the Italian Supreme Court decided in 2004 that there is actually an exception to the general rule on state immunity in the face of international crimes and serious violations of human rights. Okay, before you get all excited, I have to break it to you that Germany did end up suing Italy over its decision before the International Court of Justice. The International Court of Justice found in favor of Germany and decided that states are not deprived of immunity by accusations of serious serious violations of international human rights law or the law of armed conflict. But oh well, you gave a hell of a fight. Luigi's story shows us that suing a foreign government before your country's domestic courts is tough. The 2004 United Nations Convention on Jurisdictional Immunities of States and Their Properties certainly reinforces this. Then how about suing a foreign government before its own domestic courts? In that scenario, we run into yet another magical term, sovereign immunity. This principle in general means that governments are protected from lawsuits. Domestic laws or multilateral treaties generally stipulate when suing a government is possible. An important example here is the European Convention on Human Rights. 47 countries have signed this convention and agreed that any person may sue them before their domestic courts when an alleged human rights violation takes place within their jurisdiction. Regardless of nationality, place of residence, civil status, situation, or legal capacity. Third possible way of suing a foreign government is by bringing a claim before an international body. An important example here is the mechanism of investor state dispute settlement. If you're investing in a foreign country, you might be entitled to sue that country for discriminatory practices concerning your direct investment before an ad hoc international arbitral tribunal. The what now? An ad hoc international arbitral tribunal. What's that? It's an ad hoc international arbitral tribunal. <laughs> Whether you're entitled to use this mechanism depends on the bilateral and multilateral trade and investment treaties your country has signed with other countries. But of course, only the best of the best investors know about treaty shopping. That means that if your country has no investment treaty with a country where you want to invest in, then you can still gain access to the investor state dispute settlement mechanism by investing indirectly through a subsidiary located in a third country which has signed the investment treaty. So what do you think about all these options? Would you like to give one of them a try? If you could sue a government, which one would you sue and why? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in the next video.